Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here and it is our Sunday tutorial. Um, it's going to be probably airing pretty late tonight because it's later in the day that I'm starting this and it does take a while to get it uploaded and ready to go. But it still will be Sunday, hopefully. So this is part two of my um, dangle making series, but, but, but it's part two of dissecting and repurposing um, jewelry. So if you watched part one, you saw that I had taken apart a couple of necklaces. Like I, I don't think I actually took the, the black necklace apart in the video. I did it afterwards, but because I used the necklace to hold all the other beads in place. But these pink and silver beads here were from another necklace. And I'm just going to quickly recap everything else that's on the table. Um, so in this corner is the jewelry that I said I'm going to put for sale. And so I'm moving that out of the way now because I, I know what I'm doing with it. So it's out of the picture. And then these jewelry pieces here, I said, were going to be components that I would use uh, for uh, journals, maybe as a cover focal piece or dangling somehow or somehow incorporated into um, a journal. The same with this scarf pin and this ring. So as as I get to uh, projects where I'm using these things, I will um, go back or, or um, refer back to these videos so that you can go back and see the original pieces again. So I'm just, uh, again, doing a quick recap. So I had done these two beaded dangles in, in the um, last video where I showed you just to put it on a pin. And it was so convenient that I had a black pin in that bag of jewelry stuff. And then this dangle, after I made it, I stuck it onto a paper clip uh, to show you that you can add these things very easily to a paper clip. And this was my pile of earring backs that I use for making stick pins. So we'll have a day where we do that as well. And I hadn't mentioned it before, but I do keep the used shepherd hooks. And that's because sometimes I will add them onto a dangle, like almost like an earring again. Here, I'll just take this off the paper clip. So I've opened this up because I'd taken the earring off. So I would add them onto a dangle and it would start out looking like an earring, earring, but I would roll this into a loop and I'll just quickly show you that so that it can be, maybe I won't quickly show you, uh, so, so that it can be added um, or used to extend your, your, um, dangle piece by turning this into a hook and it's also a great way now this one I'm turning right into a, a round loop here if you can see that I've done that and so this is just a great way to add a little bit more length onto your dangle piece if you were using it as well as to hook it onto something so uh, there is that option and also, I like to use um, the hooks if you have a screen or um, something that you can hook these onto. It's fun to just put these back on the hooks, leaving them open and having them on display on a screen or on a piece of metal. I'm going to get something really quickly just to show you. Sorry, I should have been a little bit more prepared for this part, but... I'm just seconds away. So, for example, you, you know, you have to think a little bit outside the box, but this was just, um, it was a metal piece from an old lamp. I, I don't even know which way it went, but you can see it's full of holes. So, if you have a lot of dangles made and you want to put them on display in your room, you can take these old earring hooks that you're not going to use because they are used and just hook it onto something like this or on a screen or whatever you have and then you can have your dangles on display so and that's kind of a fun way to remind yourself of what colors you have and what you've made before and how you can make other things to go with it so if you don't have something like this you can take a picture frame and and take the picture glass out of it and put um, wrap a piece of screen around 
inside so that you can have it sitting in the frame and then and hook these on there or you know look for an old um hand towel stand you know the ones that had the little long prongs that came out for hanging your two your two um hand towels well you can you can hook these on the hand towel as well so there's lots of different things you could take an old lampshade and take the the uh fabric off of it and just have the wire uh, lampshade and again use it to hook things on maybe you have earring stands that you can put these onto um, just to have them on display and and just a nice way to uh, keep track of what you have in your inventory so that is what I I use these used hooks for because I don't know if somebody's worn these on their ears and they look clean and yeah, you could clean them, but I just, for myself, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So instead of throwing them out, I do make use of them as two different styles of hooks. So I just wanted to clarify that with you that I hadn't talked about these hooks before in, in um, the first video. So I, that's why I'm keeping these. And all the little backs, like the ones that have the plastic on them, and the ones that are just the plain without the plastic, the same style, and even the little butterfly hooks or uh, backs, I keep all of those to use in my um, uh, stick pin making. So I, when we have a video, we will, of course, go back to these. And so you'll get to see how those are used exactly. So then I had my... Uh, pearl earring pieces and you know we knew these weren't made out of gold and they're too long to use as a poke through pin for something because you'd have the other end sticking out on the other side you can pop the pearls off or the gems off and turn that into jewelry bits um, but I, you know, I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do with these. So I've just been accumulating them I've, and I'm going to put them all in a little jar until it all of a sudden it comes to me what to do, uh, and how to use these, because I know that I can use them in, in some way. I just haven't figured it out yet. So, so there's that pile. And then there was my little pile of gold. Um, and I have to tell you, I got so many messages that so many of you went back with a magnet to your jewelry box. Um, and I even told a cust uh, one of my uh, uh, subscribers, uh, Maribeth, I said, yeah, your husband was probably sweating to make sure that all the jewelry really was gold that he's given you all these years. And it turns out it was. Um, but this is my little jewelry pile that doesn't stick to the magnet. Nothing sticks. So it might be my little pot of gold that I have here. We will find out later on. And I also uh, talked about um, going to see one of those gold buyer dealer things uh, and not to be so worried about them. You know, they are reputable. They do have a standard uh, that they have to follow. And someone mentioned to me that they don't have a gold deal dealer in their town. And, and that's quite possible. There are lots of small towns where you wouldn't have one. You'd have to go to a bigger city. But there are several that have a procedure where you contact them and they send you a, a prepaid envelope. You put your jewelry in it, into it. It goes by, um, I guess, express post or somehow special through through the post. And you put your jewelry in and send it off to them. And, and there, again, you know, reputation is everything in that business. And so they, they uh, film opening your, your package when they get it at the other end. And they go through it with you uh, online. And I think there is some conversation back and forth. So if you don't have someone in your local town, you can also uh, look into that method to see if that's something you can do uh, to send your jewelry off somewhere. But yeah, it, again, it's just, these are just scraps that I've found in my repurposing. And so they aren't uh, anything that is special to me. But even if you have broken jewelry or an old ring that you got from an, an old boyfriend years ago that you've kept all these years, why not turn it into a little bit of cash to spend on your, on your other projects and your other uh, art creations? So, so that was that. The other thing I had talked about was this gold pair of earrings that had the prong, the earring prong that stuck out with the clasp that went back. I ended up breaking them off of both of these. And for the sake of the video, I already glued one down to one of these filigree pieces. Now, if you remember, this filigree necklace was all uh, put together with jump rings. And I was going to take two pairs of prior, uh, pliers 
and pry open each of these jump rings um, to take them off of this necklace. I saved a few pieces for you guys. Uh, and that lasted a whole uh, one piece uh, because, as I said in the video, that they are connected two and three places. Um, and so it, it takes a long time to take all of these off. And I knew that the jump rings, um, they're not the greatest jump ring that's on here to try and save it for another project. Uh, although I have done it in the past, but um, I've, I've got a nice collection of jump rings. And so sometimes I have to look at time versus um, uh, saving every single thing. And I just take a pair of um, cutters and I just cut the uh, jump ring and it comes off. And you can see it's still attached because there was another one. And there we go. And so these little bits will get discarded um, only because this is very um, time consuming. And I don't think I'd be able to use these jump rings. They're pretty small. So I'm not going to take apart any more online, but I'm just showing you the alternative. If you come across a necklace like that. And there's also, sometimes they're not just these flat filigree pieces. Sometimes they're flowers where the whole necklace is made up of flowers. Don't have one handy, but um, again, they're all connected with these little jump rings. So um, it's just a matter of either taking them apart if you're going to try to save the jump ring, if it's, if it's a sizable piece. Um, otherwise, you know, just taking a pair of pliers and snipping, uh, or cutters and snipping gets the piece off and then you gather all your bits and discard them. So again, I'm not going to go too deep into that. I'm going to do more after. So what I did is I, I just used some E6000 glue and it's no, you know, it really doesn't matter. You want a glue that will adhere metal to metal, E6000, um, goop, uh, even some of the super glues or, or gorilla glues or whatever they are, they will all work to hold metal to, to metal. And so I've just glued it down into this filigree piece and what a difference that makes. Eh? If you just look at the difference in the two pieces. Now this could be used as a cabochon as well, or um, the center of a lace flower or a, an alternative to a button on a, um, a cluster or in a cluster as itself or it could be glued down to cardboard it doesn't have to be glued down to uh, filigree pieces you could have a really nice ornate cardboard um, die cut that you you've got that you can glue this onto or like I said use it by itself so that was just a couple of alternatives so now that I have this glued onto here I think what I will do is take another jump ring <laughs> and put this back together on top or on the bottom but those are things that I will do off camera and then show you later so the next piece was the chain that came from this filigree necklace and it has the lobster claw and what I've done here is this is just one long piece of chain it could be cut in half um, or I could use the full length if I want same with this one it's just another piece of chain that I can use. Um, I think what I would probably do is, is bead some, uh, make some bead dangles and dangle them down uh, this piece. Um, and, and there are some other options for this one as, but I haven't decided what as of yet, but that was just to show you that you can save these pieces and reuse them. So then these were all the earrings that I took the hooks off or the backs off of them. And so they've all become sort of a charm type piece. Um, there's a piece of a glass chandelier. There's these um, earrings here. And these can all now be dangles or charms to use um, by themselves or with some of the other pieces. Like these are just so gorgeous and so glittery. I don't know quite yet what I'm going to do with them. Um, but, but the focus is was on sorting and now this this um I'm all over the place today Ugh. uh this pair of earrings if you remember I took the hook and very gently was able to turn it into a loop if you can see that 
So now this in itself becomes a charm. This one wasn't so lucky. I broke it off. So now it is again just a flat piece that I can glue on to something at the same way as you would use a button or, or a cabochon. Or it could be glued on to one of these filigree pieces as a backdrop. Isn't that pretty? Um, just like that. What a difference that makes to that piece. And then having a little pearl dangle or a glass dangle. I've got these glass beads here. One of them dangling might be something that's really cute to use. And I've also got these pearls. I might be able to somehow incorporate those. So there's lots of options, but this one now is not another one of these with the hook on it. It, it has to be used as a flat piece. So I'm, I think I'm going to glue it down to that and come up with something. So these were all the beads here that I harvest from those two necklaces. And there were a couple of odd beads. Um, there's also a lot of the little gold spacer beads that were used in between the black beads. And I, I can't stress enough that uh, when you take this stuff apart, you want to be sure to use it because otherwise it gets put in jars, it gets put in containers and it, it never gets used because, you know, we keep buying stuff right all the time. So the, the idea is to, to make all of this into something that you can use in your journals and, and per repurpose and be ready to go. Um, and it, it's fun. It doesn't take long. But because I have a lot of black beads here and I have only a handful of the little gold spacers, I think they kind of, um, uh, these, these little round disc ones were three together and then a gold spacer. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of stuff in from my, my, uh, bead collection in order to, to finish these off. And I do have, um, stuff in gold and silver here on the table to use. And I'm, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use those next. So all of these beads are going to turn into dangles. It's not like I don't have other beads to use for other projects. It's not like I don't have beads, um, to, to, uh, use for a specific project, like for, if I want something for a certain color. And if you don't have a huge collection, then yeah, keep maybe, you know, a dozen or a half dozen of each style aside uh, in a little baggie that just get your collection started, but try to use up everything. Try to get everything off your table. Um, it just makes it so much easier and it's kind of relaxing to sit here and, and put all this stuff together and challenge yourself to just use for the most part, what you have on the table. Um, and like I said, the only thing I'm going to add is a few spacer beads, uh, to this collection and, and put them all together. And, and I will do most of that off camera and show you, uh, the finished projects, uh, when I'm done. So the last thing to talk about, and I just briefly talked about it the other day was taking this whole piece and turning it into one great big tassel. And because there is a lobster claw at the end here, and there's a very large ring that I can, I can put this ring as the base of the lobster claw and then start building this tassel. And I will, for the most part, do that only because I told you I would do that. And I want you to see, but some of this, I'm this, um, where it's a little bit more pearly, I'm going to use those separately, um, to make other dangles. And, um, I'm thinking that the two of these sets of three here, like where the, there's the large with the two small ones. If you go back to these, this pile, I have these two stones they're I don't know if they're um, some kind of stone that has been polished and they have the claw right built right on it as well as the jump ring so I'm thinking that I might use those to make a nice dangle again something I can do off camera so that's just the recap of how I've deconstructed this jewelry and sorted it and how I'm going to use it. And I'm going to use everything that's on this table. I'm, I'm excited because once I stop the video, then I go into real work mode and, and clean up, uh, everything all together. But all the stuff I've shown you that is, has been, uh, compartmentalized into other areas will go off into their other areas, including this pile of findings, but I think I'll keep it here just in case I need some extra findings. 
So now that I've shown you that, and now that we've talked about how to take apart all this jewelry, now it's how to reconstruct it. And I showed you very quickly the head pin and the eye pin. And I'm going to take some out today in gold. This is my, this is my gold box um, of things that I need immediately to work with. So smaller spacing beads. There's jump rings in here. There's uh, larger spacer beads and connectors. There's chain. There's lobster claws. So it's quite an assortment. But all I'm going to take out of this is the wire, um, a couple of spacer beads. I think there's still some gold ones there that we'll use, but... Uh, I'll use these ones. There we go. And I'm going to take out head pins. And eye pins. Nope, that's not eye pins. I know I have them. Well, we'll just have to make our own. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So eye pins had the little loop at the end of them and head pins look like a little nail or, or a pin, um, straight pin with the little tiny, I don't want to take that too far there. They have a little tiny head on the top of it, just like a nail or, or a sewing pin. And eye pins have the have the little loop at one end and I'm just going to quickly make one. And so that is so that you can loop it onto something else and still have the end where the beads can go onto it and then uh, put another eye pin uh, loop at the other end. So it can still connect to something and then have something else connected to it. So those are the main two items that you use. And if you don't have uh, these in your stash of stuff, they're not expensive to buy. You get them usually 100 in a package or 50 in a package. And it's, it's not overly expensive. But then it gets to the point where you need silver and gold and brass. So you really want to decide that's what you want to do. But you saw how quickly it was for me to make this eye pin using just a piece of wire. Now the wire I use is a 20 gauge wire. Uh, these rolls come with 15 yards on a roll and trust me it's a lot of wire and um, I use this probably more often than I use these items. But it's because I usually make quite long dangles or I'm using this wire to go through a boho bead that's quite long so I, I do tend to use this more than, than these. But in my jewelry days of making jewelry I did use these head pins and eye pins a lot and when I'm making these dangles to go on other projects I, I tend to go back to these and and use these first and unless I run into a situation where I've you I've got too many beads to go on these little head pins then I will um, go back to using my wire so that is the the items that I mostly use and then there's the jump rings and I think I had some of those on the table but they may have disappeared on me. I'll get some again. Uh, the jump rings are the little round ring. I'll just get some out now. You know, I just saw some. Sorry for the pause again. Here we go. Although I'm sure I have an open pack somewhere. These ones are bigger. I have them in different sizes as well. Yeah, it's on the table here somewhere. <laughs> Who knows where? Um, but yeah, the jump rings are just the little round loop that connects uh, one piece to the next if you need a connection. And they come a ginormous amount in a package, um, usually a hundred to five hundred in a package. There's always they always come with lots. 
So I might use that to connect a charm to an eye pin or, or something to an eye pin, or I would use these to uh, connect items to a piece of chain, um, individual beads that would go on to a piece of chain. So those that's the other main jewelry finding that I use, unless I'm making earrings or a bracelet, then of course you get into the lobster claws. Um, and you know, for necklaces, you use uh, toggles and, and same with bracelets, you, you would use the toggles, but that's a whole nother story from today. Okay, we're getting into the, the minutes here, so I've got to be careful. So in order to 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 make a pair of earrings um, or, or, or to do this kind of um, repurposing jewelry, I recommend that you have a either a big piece of fabric or felt or something to work on so your beads aren't rolling around on you. So things are, are easy to pile up. I don't care for those plastic necklace boards that have the little pockets because I usually end up with way more stuff than there are pockets in those things. And um, <laughs> if you knock one of those, all of your beads go flying. Trust me from experience on that. Those little felted boards, everything goes flying. If you knock something here, the rest of it should stay, unless your table collapses, of course, but the rest of it should stay fairly intact. Um, so I recommend just putting a piece of fabric down or or a towel that isn't too bumpy. Like I wouldn't use a bath towel, but I might use a kitchen towel. Um, something that's pretty neutral so you can see your colors, nothing too patterned. Um, it just gives you a nice base and space to work on. And also tries to keep you a little confined because you don't want your beads spreading out too much. So that's the one of the supply items that I would I would recommend. And then you need some tools. You need tools to cut, to cut your wires, to cut your, your um, head pins shorter or your eye pins shorter, um, to cut uh, jump rings off of your, your jewelry that you're taking apart. Now I have an industrial pair here, which um, you can get at any hardware stores. And, and for the most part, these are the ones I use. Um, they don't fall apart. I've probably had this pair of pliers for 30 years. These are jewelry pliers. They're not as strong. They will cut through wire, but um, when I test them on trying to do other things, I always have to go back to these and these will cut all kinds of extra things like shanks off of buttons, um, wire that is uh, industrial strength. This will cut paper clips, um, which, yeah, I cut plate paper clips in half. Another story. So there are lots of options. And I always recommend if you're going to go out and buy the tools, buy the good ones. Don't, don't waste your time. You know, you can steal them out of your husband's toolbox, but he doesn't get, he doesn't like that too much. Uh, trust me on that one too. Um, when it comes to the smaller tools, you can usually get them in a set. Uh, but I would recommend you stay away from buying the sets and only buy the pieces that you need and spend the money on the better quality pieces. Um, so, so I do use these, but I always tend to go back to these ones. Uh, so it's kind of, um, you know, bigger is better or the more industrial is better than, than the little tiny jewelry ones. But if you're just going to dabble in a little bit of jewelry, then yes, go ahead for the small tools. Um, the next thing you need is uh, needle nose pliers. So again, I have the jewelry ones. Uh, these ones tend to, the, the little rubber things tend to come off of them. I use them so much. Um, and then there's the heavy duty um, uh, industrial ones or the tool ones that you would find in the hardware tool department. Um, and, and yes, they cost more. Again, they, they also cut wire. They have wire cutters right in here. and they cut it like butter. These, the smaller ones that the jewelry ones also cut wire, but not as good. So again, it falls under the cute little jewelry tools, um, heavy duty, ooh, 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 real tools. So, um, I do recommend these. The third item that you really need in your, your stash, if you're going to make jewelry or dangles is a good pair of round nose pliers. 
Now I have, I don't have them here, but I do have the larger round nose pliers, but they're not really ideal for jewelry making unless you want to make really big rings because of course they're, they're much bigger, but these make perfect round rings every time. And, um, it's something that you use for making eye pins and it's just a matter of how big of a hole or a loop you want and just rolling it around until it touches, touches the other end of the wire to make your eye pin. And we're going to go through that again in a, in a few seconds. So, so these are definitely a must in your collection of tools. So three tools, doesn't matter which size, whether you go with the industrial size, well, the round nose ones aren't great and the industrial size are pretty big. Um, but, but three tools is cutting tools, needle nose and round nose. Okay. So needle nose is like, like an alligator's mouth kind of thing. And the round nose is, they're just round tools and your cutters. So that's your basic tools. And then you need some glue if you're going to glue anything. And then the assorted parts if you're going to turn it into other jewelry. But for today's uh, lesson, it's just about making dangles. And so I'm going to take some of these beads and turn them into dangles while you watch. And then I will do the rest off camera and I will work with all the rest of this stuff off camera. So I showed you with a head pin when I made the, the earring, just like this, this uh, black one here, Not, I, I call them earrings uh, and you have to uh, forgive me on this. I will call them earrings a lot because that's, I used to make earrings. So, so I, I often have, uh, we'll use that term because I've made thousands of pairs of earrings in my lifetime. So you, you need to start with a smaller bead that is going to ensure that your beads don't fall off, um, the end of your cap. If you try to use like, for example, this silver one, if I try to use that, it's just going to fall right off. So you need something to stop that bead that is bigger than the hole of the bead you're working with. So I'm starting with this little gold bead and feeding it onto the, the uh, head pin. Now this one has a bigger head on it than normal. And then you would just feed your beads on and close it at the other end. And that's the closing part is, is the part that I really want to stress for you. And I'm just going to, um, I'm not super prepared here. Um, we'll just go ahead and make the same similar style as what I did last time. I fed this oval bead on and then I put a gold one to use as a spacer in between. If you can see all that. And then I put three of these flat round beads and then finished with another gold bead. So in this case, I, I you, you need to have at least a quarter inch. And I, I know I talked about that before, but I really wanted to, to go over it again is you need to have at least a quarter inch to bend and then turn into a loop. So then you would take your um, needle nose pliers and holding it right, uh, I'm trying to get the right um, visual here, holding it right against this last bead, as close as you can get, pushing all your beads down, you're just going to bend the wire so it's at a 45 degree angle or better. So it looks like that. Can you see the, and because this is about a quarter of an inch, it might be a little bit more, but it's approximately a quarter of an inch. I'm going to take the round nose pliers and holding it at the very end. And it depends on the size of loop. Um, if you look at my, my, uh, round nose, you can sort of tell, I always go about halfway because they're 
so so worn down. But this is something you're going to have to test using and doing yourself. And I just hold it and bring it around and keep pushing it until it gets to the other side. Now, this is not something that's easy to show on camera. And I, I've stressed before, there are other people who do this, but a lot of times they get you to wrap the beads and you don't really need to wrap the bead or wrap the wire where they wrap it around to seal it. I have the two wires, the loop comes around and touches the other wire. So there's no way this bead is coming off of here. No way. So it is closed and the beads are on here and you've got a dangle ready to go. Now they, t they talk about wire wrapping, which is, is definitely a good thing uh, to ensure that your, your um, beads stay on your, your wire and that they stay intact. But if you're using it, this is a 20 gauge wire. And if you're using a 20 gauge, just bringing the loop to touch the other wire when you go around is more than sufficient. You, so you don't have to do the wire wrapping and the wire wrapping is a little bit more difficult. And if you follow um, some of the videos, you'll see some people just close it the way I did and others uh, will, will make, um, we'll do the whole wraparound thing. And it, it's confusing, but if you, if you learn both techniques, um, you'll find that this is the quick way. And, and, uh, I tend to, to go with this first, unless I'm using a finer wire and that I would have to save for another day, perhaps some jewelry type classes. Um, but you can find lots of different um, tutorials online to show you how to make a loop and how to close your, your jewelry piece. I I just want to remind you that my focus is to repurpose uh, the jewelry. And so I'm, I'm going to use the easiest method uh, because I'm not really teaching you the jewelry process so much as I'm teaching you how to use the jewelry and how to, to make up, um, repurpose it. Um, but I do want to show you a little bit and, and explain that this is the easy way. If you, um, practice and play with wire a little bit, you, you, you may decide you like, uh, doing the wrapping instead. Um, but, but that's entirely up to you. And like I said, I, I don't know that I have the right camera or the right, um, methods to show you <laughs> how many different ways there are to do this. So, so, you know, feel free to check out some other videos, um, that might be a little bit more in tune with jewelry making and, and wire wrapping. So, so that is the, the loop that way. Now I can do the same thing with the eye pin. And I made the eye pin by just making a loop. And again, I, I made the loop by wrapping it with the, the, the uh, round nose pliers until it came around to the other end. So this little loop uh, can be the, the top or the bottom of the, the uh, dangle, however you choose. Um, but now I'm going to do the same beads on this one. So I'm adding a gold bead. And then I'm adding this large black oval bead, another gold one, and then three of these flat beads. And then another gold one, if they don't run away on me, but you can see they're not running very far. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, except this time I have a little I loop at the bottom instead of the flat loop and I've got my wire at the top. It's a little bit longer than a quarter of an inch. If you can see. So I'm just going to first bend it at a 45 degree angle so that I don't lose my beads. So you bend it first and then trim your wire down. Now, usually when I'm doing this, my finger fits between the beads and where I'm going to cut the wire. That's why I said the other one was just a little bit longer. If you can see where it's sitting on my finger here, 
So that's about a quarter of an inch, whereas this one was just a tad longer. Not enough to make a difference. So I'm grabbing it with the, the round nose pliers now. About halfway. And just bringing it around until it touches the other wire. And sometimes you have to make several times around. So now I have that eye pin loop on both ends, one at the top and one at the bottom, whichever you decide is the top and the bottom. I'm going to go this way and say that this is the top with the three smaller beads this time around. But I have this loop here and I have all of these different dangles and I'm going to choose this one because it's got gold and it's got a little bit of glitter in it. And so now I'm going to take a jump ring and this is where you need at least two different pairs of pliers. You need to find the opening of your jump ring and depending on your glasses you may need to have a magnifying glass. And I'm going to grab it on one side of the opening that you can't really see with one pair. And I'm going to grab it on the other side of the opening with the other pair. And we have a tendency to think that when you open a jump ring, you open it this way. The two ends away from each other. But instead, you're going to open it this way. And the reason for that is that the jump ring right now is exactly, in fact, here we, I'm even holding it wrong here. Can't even see it on these ones. They're so, when they make these, they're so tight together that um, they're perfectly lined. So when you, when you open it this way, you're still keeping them in line and it makes it easier to close. If you have to try and close it, sorry. By pulling it apart this way, you're going to find that they're going to miss because when you're pulling it apart this way, you're probably moving a little bit on an angle and it makes it a little go a little bit wonky donkey. And then when you go to close it, they never fit closed together. So I've opened up the jump ring and jump rings are not your friend. You're going to be cursing. If you haven't used jump rings before, you're going to be cursing. You're going to lose them on the floor. Might be a good idea to have that magnet handy. You're going to lose them uh, on your table. You're not, never going to find them again. I don't know where they go. They, they go all over the place. Even for us seasoned, experienced people who do this all the time, they, they, they leave you. Never to be found again. And so I'm going to slip that little charm thing on the... You can see it kind of rolling around there, but this is open. And now I'm going to put this other piece, the bottom of the, the bottom loop onto this jump ring. So I've got both of them dangling right now and don't let go of it. <laughs> and my pliers, my pliers are magnetic. So they, <laughs> they've picked up a few of these jump rings on the side here. And then grabbing the other piece again, the other end of this jump ring, I'm going to now bring them back together. And when you, when you bring them back together and you, and you're doing this back and forth, I don't know if you can see me moving my hands here. You can actually hear a click when they're touching. It's like a little tiny click. You won't hear it on this because I'm too noisy, but you'll actually hear a click when it's closed. And it's impossible to show you. Like I said, you need someone who's got the right camera and who's set up to show you how to do jump rings. But now I have my little charm dangling from the bottom of the eye pin that I made on the one end. And I still have the eye pin on the other end so that I can add it onto something, whether it's another jump ring to put onto a project, whether it's, and now I'm going to add some chain onto here maybe, um, it, it all like, this isn't the right color. So, so I would have gold chain, but there's nothing to say that I couldn't add it to the bottom of this now to make this a really long dangle. 
by just using another jump ring and connecting the two of those together at that end. So there are lots of options once you get going. And the main thing is to make your, your eye, eye pin at the bottom if you want to add something onto it. Or using the flat pin, the, the head pins, if you want them to just be a plain. See, now this can also dangle from here. It just doesn't have another dangle at the bottom. So this in itself would be the dangle by by hooking a jump ring. Now you can very carefully reopen this ring, slip it through here, and I'm going to do that. It's, you know, you just take your, your round nose pliers and put it in exactly where you took it off, like uh, so that it's all the way. I hope this is making sense. And then you just open it up a little tiny bit. So you can see that it's open. And add it on to your. I'm just going to decide where it's going to go right about there. And taking your same round nose pliers and closing it up, back up, touching the original wire. So this, again, becomes a piece that's ready to add onto your book. Now, because this is flat on the back, you could uh, glue it right onto a page, that, say the bottom of a page or the bottom of something, and have this dangle from the bottom. Or you can put another jump ring and and connect it on top so that it's the entire thing is a floating piece. It is endless. You can add this to another thing, to another thing, to another. You can turn it back into a necklace if you keep going. But in this case, we we put a head pin on the bottom, so we've said that's the end. Whereas when you have the eye pins, you can keep adding and adding and adding depending on the piece that you put on the end. I could put another three beads at the end of this with another eye pin. And, and just keep going and going like a long chain. Pretty much the same way that this necklace was made by adding beads after beads after beads. So that's all I have to show you right now, but I'm going to stop the camera, stop the video, and I'm going to do all of this. I'm going to turn it into something and I'm gonna come back and I'm hopefully gonna have all of this done before the end of this evening but it all depends on how far I get and I will show you the finished pieces okay I'll be right back I'm back again and I've changed my mind because I see how much time has been used up so this is going to be part two and part three will be the grand finale and I will show you that yet today okay bye for now